is up app nation it is steve p young founder of appmasters.com and welcome to the fam yes thank you miguel it is fridays with app masters our acronym is fam because frankly i like to be a family this is a community that we've built up where we try to really help each other out that's how i got started in the app space and that's why i love to do this to today still almost like eight, nine years later. And joining me today is Nadia from Buzz Guru. Look, I don't think influencer marketing is just for the big apps out there. And we've got a lot of case studies with indie developers and smaller startups using influencer marketing brilliantly. And we're going to talk to Nadia all about how to do it right and how to avoid some of those costly mistakes that others have already done for you. So joining me today, let's bring her in. Okay, let's bring her in. Come on is Nadia. She is the head of Buzz Guru. Go check them out. It is buzzguru.com with over five years experience in the field. She's helped app developers from Europe, Latin America, all over the world in tier one countries to reach their target audience. And more importantly, bring the highest ROI possible from their influencer marketing campaigns. Nadia, welcome to the fam. Thank you. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> Well, I want to say hi to a few people. Detroit Pizza, holla. Wow. Okay, Elsmar. And then Miguel, what's up? I think Miguel, I think you came up with fam or Rassi came up with fam last week. James, what's going on? And then Rudy's here. Okay, Steve, you can start. I'm here. Okay, <laughs> good. Thank you, Rudy. As you can see, we're, we're very friendly and jokey around here. Hello, fam. Matthew, good to see you, man. And then we've got the I team, the Kardashian emoji was a suburb example of how influencer marketing can be. True, true, true. We got Joe, what's up? And then Yusuf as well. There's a lot of people here already. Nadia, I know we, we talked about this too. In unlike other marketing campaigns, app marketing campaigns, when you talk about Facebook, when you talk about Apple search ads, when you talk about Google ads, I feel like, hey, you can spend five to ten thousand and half bad results, like, but in a high cost per install, but with influencer marketing, you can spend that money and see zero results. So how do we go about avoiding that particular mistake? Well, uh, that is actually an excellent question because this is really something that happens, uh, to a lot of, uh, companies that only are beginning their way on influencer marketing, just because they don't simply know what mistakes to avoid. That's obvious. So uh, the number one rule would be to come up with a relevant strategy with well elaborated stra strategy for um, for the campaign. If you miss at least one point of uh, the, I would say six uh, basic points, then you're done. And you can spend 5K, you can sp spend 10K, you can spend 20, 50, uh, whatever amount and get zero result if you just don't plan it correctly. So we can quickly go uh, through the strategy if you don't mind. Or... Sure, let's do it. Okay, so uh, the number one goal for each campaign uh, for whatever product would be to set a specific goal for the campaign. Of course, there are several, uh, I would say the most popular goals like performance or revenue, but um, there are also several other goals that might be achieved with influencer marketing that many companies don't even think about. So one of these would be um, the search results optimization on Google and YouTube. So for uh, many apps, it's essential to build uh, a nice reputation if an app is a bit complicated and needs uh, some advice to users. Sometimes the resources that are available uh, on the internet are just not enough. And people tend to look up something they're not familiar with. So what they're gonna do, what I would do personally, I would just go to YouTube and uh, try to find something on the app. So um, another type of a strategy, another type of the goal would be uh, the promotion of a corporate account. Uh, it could be brand awareness. It could be basically anything. But if you pick a specifically set goal, this is, I would say, at 30% of, of the success rate. Uh, if if you're a bit hesitant about the goal, then just try to elaborate on uh, what results are the key and what would be a nice addition to that. So the strategy might include not one, but two goals as well. Got it. Uh, this is pretty basic, but uh, the second point would be to pick uh, the best region for the campaign. And while planning an influencer marketing campaign, it's a bit more complicated than planning 
a different kind of marketing campaign since you have to keep in mind all those uh, details and all those um, specifics of each region and how well this region uh, performs for your app. So, uh, for example, the number one rule, and if you cannot follow that rule, you just should not probably start influencer marketing, is to pick a region where uh, you can track organic traffic influxes. So what you're going to do is you're going to analyze all of the regions that you're potentially interested in and pick a region with stable uh, organic traffic influx. Influencer marketing is um, a very specific uh, marketing channel and it does provide a lot of organic traffic. If you pick a wrong region where uh, the, the organic traffic just fluctuates or is very volatile and you can really predict and see the medium average, then you're going to lose 50% of the traffic. So your uh, ROIs and your uh, overall metrics, the cost per install would just double. Got it. Many clients do not uh, include that in into their campaigns. So uh, if we're talking about those who can spend 5K or 10K and just lose it all, that would be uh, these guys. So organic traffic is the number one rule of influencer marketing. Uh, then what we would need to do is to uh, decide whether we would like to explore a new region or to build up our presence on the most performing ones. And uh, that also affects the strategy, it affects uh, how many influencers we would need uh, to see the result. How um, should we build our strategy? How should the influencers build their creatives? Because if the product is something completely new to the region, that might not be... Um, the best, uh, the best way to promote the app if we're talking about the creatives. And uh, also another, a bit unexpected point, I would say for um, many companies that we talk to is when picking a region, just make sure that this region has influencers. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a bit funny, but that's the truth because uh, we have a lot of requests from different companies to uh, find, for example, influencers from Nigeria, because okay. that's yep. the best market for them. But there are just no influencers in Nigeria. And if there are just a couple, their audience might not match your expectations because uh, the Nigerian influencers won't be followed by 100% Nigerian audience. Right, right. Hey, Nadia, a couple of things I want to hit on. the sure. When you say the goal, right, what if the goal is just... I want to get more downloads. And I know you kind of alluded to this with the organic downloads stuff, but it's just, I want to get more downloads. So what if it's just that goal? Is that the wrong goal to have when you're just starting an influencer marketing campaign? Because I know when most people come, I, they're just like, how do I get more downloads? And that's all they care about. Yeah, this is a perfectly fine goal. I would say this is the number one goal based on popularity. So uh, this is just the <laughs> goal you can build a campaign on. So that's fine as well. Okay. And any best practice, any best practices on if that is the primary goal that we want to go forward with? Uh, yeah, if uh, the primary goal is to get more downloads, the first step would be to understand how many downloads we're talking about. Mm. So um, this would help us build up the budget. This would help us uh, pick a region and basically just do everything, build up the whole strategy. So once we know that uh, we need, for example, 10,000 in, uh, 10, installs from a specific region, then using the influencer marketing mathematics, we can just count it down to uh, from downloads to clicks, from clicks to views, and from views to the overall budget. So if we're talking about the downloads, we need to know uh, how many we're thinking about. And to work backwards from the download numbers. Yeah, because well, influencer marketing conversion rates are totally different. They're very specific. They tend to change uh, depending on a platform, an ad format, a content uh, you're thinking of. So this would be the number one step, of course. Yeah, I like it. So work backwards from that. I know Matthew had a question about this where he has a silver and gold scrap app. And so I think, Matthew, correct me if I'm wrong, it's for the like to see value of the silver and gold. And he's trying to think about like, how do we get, how do we find an influencer? Which influencer should we go after if we've got this type of app? 
Well, that's a very nice question, but uh, to really analyze and tell you what kind of influencer uh, would fit best, it's essential to analyze the app. So that's what we do all the time before we even try to uh, present a strategy to a client or to even go on a call with them. What we do is we get the app, we download it, we analyze it, we spend uh, at least an hour in an app and just to try and figure out what we're talking about. So this might differ. What are you looking for when you're analyzing that app? So when you're looking at Matthew's app, are there some key things that you're looking for? Um, I wouldn't say there, there, there are some key things. Of course, there are the things that um, we pay close, closer attention to, but basically we're just evaluating at the app um, based on the user-friendly interface, the user experience in general. We're trying to see uh, what could confuse the audience that would come from influencers. So we're kind of trying to plan it, um, plan it to like the future and to see uh, what might go wrong. This is a very negative approach, but this is the best performing one. Yeah. So we try to analyze the best uh, features that might be perfect for influencer market marketing. Let's say that the marketable features and uh, those features that would not require a lot of highlighting with influencers since uh, it would be not very organic or native and it would not actually motivate the audience. So our job when analyzing the app to see uh, what key features would bring the audience, would really motivate the audience to uh, download the app. Yeah, and I like that because, you know, I, when we work with clients too, we're doing the same thing. Like it's not just downloads because you ultimately want those downloads to turn into something. And so you guys are looking for the right features. I'm looking to see if we bring in downloads, are, are these just going to be a leaky bucket too? And so we have, we take a look at the app as well for that. All right. There are some questions. DSD group says, hi, Steve, I submitted my application two months ago, but cannot review it Yeah, Sorry, DSD. So we have a, almost like a six month wait now for all the apps that we want to review. So I apologize. If you want to set up a call just with you and me, you can do that and shortcut it. Otherwise it is sort of like a six month wait. Elsmar said, what is a reasonable goal for about a thousand to maybe $10,000 budget, Nadia? Uh, actually, the $10,000 budget would be actually a pretty okay budget to start with almost each region that you, that you think of, and it would fit uh, many of the, the goals and strategies. So if your strategy is to simply get downloads, that's also okay with 10K. If we're not talking about some very expensive regions like uh, the United States or Korea, Japan, the Nordic countries, this are these countries are way too expensive to spend 10k on but for other countries you can actually do basically anything you want so the the download strategy even the brand awareness strategy for some of the reasons would be okay got it got it uh, but for 1k oh that's really difficult to think of a strategy because uh 1k is a too small budget to try out even one region so what you can do if you have a limited budget for uh, each month, you can try um, testing different strategies and achieving different goals each month. Once uh, and once your budget just allows you to, you can scale uh, the strategy that works best. So 1K is only aimed, I would say, at this like one-time smaller influencers launches and um, maybe the creatives rights buyout. So if you would like to uh, use the influencers creatives in Facebook ads or on Instagram or uh, whatever ads you run, uh, you could also use uh, influencers for that. So if you come up with a task assignment and you reach out to smaller and cheaper influencers, they will be more than happy to produce a creative for you to uh, run in an ad. So basically what you do, you give them the task, you receive um, the video, you check if everything's okay with it. And if you like the video, if everything's perfect, you just pay uh, the influencer for uh, buying out the intellectual property rights to the specific creative, and you can then use it in your other campaigns. Yeah, and we have seen that strategy work really well. The, let me 
say who else Mar, we've seen that strategy really work really well reflectly dario from reflectly the cmo he used that particular strategy where they would play in these smaller influencers just to create the content nadia and then he would run that as a an ad on facebook instagram all that stuff yeah hey, nadia, one thing i want to talk mm -hmm. yeah go ahead and what yeah, were you saying? just meaning to comment that that is actually a trend for both 2021 the, the end of 2021 and 2022 because more and more uh companies tend to uh get the most out of the campaigns and not only get the traffic from uh the influencers publications but also uh provide uh, creatives buyout so that's some, something that's getting more and more popular I think if you just scroll on TikTok, you can see those uh, types of ads with uh, the bought out creatives yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to do a TikTok video later on because I do think that TikTok is a, a great platform just from an ads perspective and an influencer marketing perspective too. And we'll dig in deep. So on Buzz Guru, Guru, I'm sorry, Guru, Buzz Guru, we can find influencers, right? Is that like if we were to try to put something in here and then try to find an influencer, we can do that within your platform? Sure, that's what it's made for. It okay. actually has okay. uh, two main goals and two main directions. Uh, the first one is uh, indeed the influencer search. So you can search influencers on Twitch, on YouTube, on Instagram and TikTok uh, based on different filters. The filters are very smart. Uh, and another direction would be um, the ability to try and see what your competitors do in terms of influencer marketing. So the platform allows you to peek into uh, what specific companies are doing. Got it. So you can see all the influencers they've launched in, uh, let's say, the last month. You can see all the videos they did. You can see uh, the approximate budget they've spent. So basically it provides a lot of analytics on other uh, companies who already do influencer marketing uh, to just kind of go and see what they do. The other question I have for you, I'll bring myself up. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to sign up for the account here. But the other question I had for you, Nadia, you talked about this in the, it's like one, if one of your goals is to get the top spot on a YouTube search term, right? Yeah. I love that strategy. One of our clients, he said, look, I've tried a lot of YouTube influencer marketing. And the one that he saw the biggest benefit was ranking for a particular search term. And so the example he gave was he's got a keyboard app, great keyboard app. And instead of being like best keyboards of 2021, for example, that has a shorter short uh, shelf life, a shorter shelf life is what I'm looking for. He went for like evergreen type of content. So the video that he sponsored was like, how do you change your default Android keyboard? And then mm -hmm. in the middle of the video is like, Hey, this, vi this video was sponsored by blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, they talked about the app, but he found those type of videos being more effective. So what were, what was your insights on YouTube? Okay, so uh, the number one goal is not to just find a perfect fitting influencer if we're talking about the search results goal, yeah. uh, but also engage the influencer to uh, put out the tags of your product into the video itself. So uh, sometimes when you go and you just search, uh, I don't know, a specific word on YouTube to see, uh, I don't know, a video, to watch a video about a specific product, uh, you might type in the name of the product you press enter, but the first video that comes um, in, in the search engine is not the video that has at least the name of the product. So this is usually uh, done by adding the tags into the video. So the influencers might name the video whatever they would like to, but uh, they put the tags of the product name in different variations, in different languages. Uh, they also put the description of an app uh, as a tag, so the video would be uh, shown like the first in the ranking. You know, one of the yeah. Let me the number one this. would be to yeah. actually get the tag. That's one hundred percent. You can even um, skip the description box uh, with just the, the mention if your goal is search engine. But what you need to do one hundred percent is use uh, the title and use the text. Got it. Love it. And one of the popular strategies that a guest of mine told me was blank versus blank. And so you might want to pick, I don't know if you guys have done this, Nadia, but like, let's say our, our product is Blinkist, we're Blinkist competitor where we have you know, book summaries. And so it's like Blinkist versus, and then maybe you put your product in there and then, or Blinkist alternatives would be an interesting 
that type of video too. Have you seen that strategy work pretty well for your guys? Uh, we've tried several of those. Uh, those would be um, the blank versus blank and yeah. uh, the integrations in such videos as, I don't know, the top five apps for whatever criteria. Uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, in, in the past, I would say two years, the influencers have turned out to be rather um, reluctant to use uh, this idea of an integration since uh, if you promote your product, having the influencer to uh, somehow eventually degrade the, the product that, that is versus yours one, um, the influencers are not very enthusiastic about it. So you have to spend really a lot of time to find those ones who would agree. And it also can bring a lot of um, like legal issues to the influencers from- Oh, you know, interesting. Not win. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that happens. It happens rarely, but it, it does sometimes. Got it. So I want to show off this platform, Buzz Guru, a little bit. So. For you, Matthew, I'm in gold, right? I just searched for gold and I, I went on TikTok right now, but we can see, let's just pick on this guy. So we're gonna do this live, Nadia, okay? I'm gonna pick on this yeah, guy. <laughs> and then I think he talks about gold because that's that's how I figured him out. But if we wanna see cost, we'll take a look, but you can sort of start to see certain things happening. And so from here, is there anything that we should be looking for to find the right influencer? So we found this guy, maybe it's because it's cold and unique boy, but let's say we found an influencer. Should we be looking at the number of comments, engagement? What should we be looking at here? I'm on the free plan right now. I would say that uh, the first thing to look at would be the average number of views on his videos Okay. Uh, to actually estimate um, the relevancy of this price and to estimate whether this influencer is a nice fit because uh, once you get the price or if you know the CPM of a region, you can basically predict how much this influencer's integration costs. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you look at the average views, you can uh, count the, the relevancy using the CPM metrics and see whether this influencer is a good fit or if uh, his integrations are just way overpriced. And another... Uh, thing that you should look into is the engagement rate since it would show you how engaged this influencer's audience actually is. So this would help you to uh, eliminate those influencer, those influencers who have uh, an active audience or uh, just have uh, like a lot of bots in, in their subscribers. So they're not really there. What's an engagement rate that what's a good engagement rate that we should be looking for? Five plus, I would say. Okay, five plus. So seven is actually a, a pretty nice figure. You uh -huh. have a good eye. Yeah, you picked a nice influencer right away. <laughs> hey, he was one of the. He's the number one result for the U.S. I ended up picking him, and I thought, you know, this would be a good fit for Matthew. And so the, Matthew has a question: What can I get with the free package? This is some of the things that you can start doing with the free package. Is just start to see who's out there. Here's the biggest influencers, and then obviously you can filter off of anything that you want here in here. But I guess we can go into the lists and topics and that's, is that what lists are about? Or is it just the list that I put together? Yeah, those would be the ones that you put together. Got it, got it. Yeah, so play around with that and you can do that. I wanna get to some of the questions because people have some really good questions. Yusuf asks, we're, what if we're building an app that's actually aimed at influencers? How do we market an app at them? So maybe this is a, we've had developers do this like it is for like instagram planning right or TikTok planning calendar or something like that maybe you said something like that or story instagram story editor things like that how do we go about marketing an app that's aimed at actually getting influencers to use our app so uh if we're talking about such products as uh, instagram story editor or just a pick editor uh those can actually be marketed just as a usual app. So uh, if you really would like the influencer to use the app and to uh, at least get them to try it, the thing that you can do is to reach out to the influencer and offer them some kind of a bonus. So for example, you reach out or you email them and you offer a six month free subscription. So they will try it, but they, they're not gonna go and invite other influencers to use it. What you can do though, uh, if you're aiming at influencers uh, specifically as your target audience, you should probably uh, try and partner with influencer agencies. 
since the influencer agencies um, mostly mostly all of them have uh, some exclusive influencers that are signed with this specific agency and the agency's goal is to help them with uh, the production with the deals with their sponsor sponsorship offers so if you get partnered with an agency then the agency might promote uh the app to their influencers and get them on board so this would be like the agency's uh, welcome on board kit if you sign with our agency you get this 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 and uh, this app to uh, do specific thing that the, the app is aimed at. So my answer would be to partner with the agencies if you would like to target influencers as uh, your target users. I like it. And then the another question is DSD group, how can we find how can we find perfect influencer when we don't know about other countries and cultures? So let's say we're somewhere else, we want to target the US or we're in the US and we want to target some other country that we're not familiar with. What's the best route to take for that? Well, the best thing would be to study the culture and to study the region and to study <laughs> the trends. So uh, without actually analyzing the region and its trends, um, it's highly unlikely that you will succeed yeah. in the campaign. Or if we're talking about a completely different region, so for example, uh, we're in the USA and we're thinking about launching a campaign in Vietnam, then that's going to be a problem if you don't have a Vietnamese speaking uh, employee. Mm. So. This, um, this launch would require uh, reaching out to a local influencer agency in Vietnam. So there are some regions that are very hard to reach and very hard to uh, launch a campaign in. So that depends on, depends on the region. He said he's starting from Africa, Nadia. Yeah, well, my answer <laughs> just stays the same. Do the hard work. You gotta yeah. study. Do the hard work. All right, DSD. Hey, Nadia, one of the things I want to point out with BuzzGuru is like, look, I can look at applications. So I'm assuming these are the applications that are doing influencer marketing, right? Yeah. And then I went into video editor because I just thought it made sense, maybe for Yusuf in a way. And we can see a lot of, so this app is doing influencer marketing. You correct me anytime if I'm doing wrong in this. Is that what we're looking at right now? Yeah, basically, uh, this page provides you the full analytics of uh, the specific product's presence on YouTube. So this might be um, organic mentions, some of them, Got or uh, the sponsorship deals. Yeah, so this is really good. And you can see what all this intel, and then you can see like the budget. You can see certain people who have produced it. Here's our most the most popular videos. And so I guess if you're on a budget, you, you could try to pick a competitor and then see what, you know, they're they're doing to maybe reach out to a that yeah. influencer is that a is that a good strategy or no uh well it actually is a good strategy since okay. if you're for example new to influencer marketing and you know nothing about it and you just don't have any ideas on uh, what brief to create and what creatives the influencers should use the best thing to do is to, to just go and analyze what your competitors have done mm. so you can um get inspiration from their ideas or, for example, you can uh, see the comments and the audience's feedback on this specific ad with this specific brief and see if uh, the ad was perceived positively or negatively. So if you see that the comments were just, oh, no, stop this, no, 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 then you can just uh, uh, do something completely different and decide that probably this specific brief is not the best idea. Yeah, so, yeah, analyze, analyze, and analyze. Yeah, then you can click into here and probably watch the video as well. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Look at that, all this stuff. Really cool platform. It is BuzzGuru, BuzzGuru, once again, buzzguru.com. Nadia, what I wanna also talk about, and maybe we end with this for the part one of this section is, let me bring it here, <laughs> is the organic growth. So you said, Hey, if one of your goals was organic growth, I know with influencer marketing, sometimes it's harder to track, right? Like it's like, Hey, they mention it. And sometimes people just go into the app stores and just search for your app. So you get a big organic growth that was actually due to the influencer mentioning it, but yes, it's hard to track that. Hey, this was happening. So what is, when you said organic growth, was it just that like, Hey, if you do an influencer marketing, you're going to get organic growth. And then two, like, how do we decide what came organically just through our normal traffic versus the influencer what are some things that we should be aware about sure uh as i said before organic traffic is 
the, the, the key part of influencer marketing. You can't do a campaign without organic traffic uh, influx. That's impossible. So uh, the thing you should do is to, uh, the, the best way would be to pick a region with uh, like the stable and not fluctuating um, organic influx. So for example, if you analyze the organic growth of your app for the last month or the last three months, for example, uh, you can see the average daily uh, influx of organic traffic. So if you see that in, in average, it would be something about like 10K installs per day, then uh, you would be able to plan the budget, you would be able to plan the strategy. And once the influencers go live, it would be very important to make sure that all the influencers go live in the same day or in like two, three days, uh, so that the influx of the organic, the, this boost of organic traffic is not lost. So if you put all the influencers publications in one, two, three days, you can really see the boost um, based on this stable average um, metric that you have measured. If that is impossible, and for example, if we're talking about the your most uh, popular region that just draws a lot of traffic from different marketing channels, then it would probably be better to uh, find another region to test um, influencer marketing as like your first time mm -hmm. to see and to acknowledge that yes, organic traffic is real because we've worked with many companies and some of them are always reluctant to acknowledge it. Like show me, I, I, I don't see influencer uh, marketing organic traffic. If I can see that, then that is not existent. So you have to make any way to uh, see and acknowledge organic traffic. Uh, if there are no regions that you can think of, or if it is impossible to track um, the organic boost in a specific region you're interested in, what you can do is you can try another completely new empty region for a smaller budget. So if uh, you try the new region where you only get like 30 organic installs per day, for example, and uh, you launch even a smaller campaign for like 5K uh, for at least some influencers, uh, then you're going to see the organic traffic anyway. And since you can track the direct traffic that um, was drawn by the tracking links, and you can also see the organic boost, you just get this difference uh, from the organic boost and you compare it to the direct number of installs that you get. Love it. I'm assuming you guys rely on the attribution partners. So if they're using apps, flyer, just Kochava, any of those things, or do you guys provide, if you're working with an app, do you guys provide some tracking links or is it like, Hey, use your attribution partner? Um, our clients always use their own attribution partners, so we simply cannot uh, get the full access to their app and to uh, really build up the links with the UTMs, etc. So this is something something that is uh, always requ requested from our client. What we can do on our side, we can just um, shorten the links via different services like Bitly or any other service. And we can see the number of clicks, uh, the source of the click, the region of the click, and uh, the timing of uh, the clicks that we got. Love it. All right. That ends part one. So again, it is budsguru.com. Go check them out there. And in part two, we're going to talk all about the different app audits. And I also have a question for you, Nadia. And so that's a little teaser for part two in terms of like what marketing channel, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, we should be focusing on and which category. So stay tuned for part two of that. And if you guys are just watching this, I know there's a few of you here, but you can catch this if you're missing a week or hey, you wanna go for a run while you listen to this, it is on the audio feed as well. If you wanna go to appmasters.com slash iTunes, you can find it there and it's on Spotify as well. So you can listen to this exact recording on the audio feed as well. All right, Nadia, are you ready to get into part two? We always start off part two. Let me hit the intro on this. We always start off part two with dad jokes. So Nadia, you're the guest. Do you want to start off the dad jokes or do you want me to be the first one to go? I would pass the opportunity to the champion. So okay. <laughs> all right, Nadia. All right, we're going to, I don't know what we're going to play for, but we'll play for something. You and I have to think about something that we're playing for and winner gets that from the loser. Nadia, a group of Karens. You familiar with this term, Karens in the U.S.? Okay, all right. A group of Karens are sitting at a restaurant together. 
A waiter approaches and asks, is anything okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at I like your game face, Nadia. I like your game face. Okay, Nadia, what you got? Uh, okay, let me think. Oh, I know uh, one that I saw on TikTok the other day. Okay. So, uh, how do you call a fancy fish? What do you, how do you call a fancy fish? Yeah. Sophisticated. <laughs> I think you're going to win that one, Nadia. I think you're going to win I that one. I honestly don't think so. <laughs> All right, leave in the comments and if you thought Nadia's joke was better, S if you thought my joke was better, and then we'll Nadia and I will play for something. We'll we'll think of something. All right, guys, if you want, look, DSD found out the hard way. If you want us to take a look at your app on a future live stream, just go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. It is about a six month wait. I know on the page I put one month wait because that was page was built early on when we started doing this, but it's about a six month wait. And if you want to shortcut that, you can, you and I can sit down together for an hour as well, if you want to do that, but it is at masters.com slash audit. All right, Nadia, let's see what the early, oh, the early votes are coming in. Early votes are coming in. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's look at this app. And I try to pick out these apps and Nadia, I picked out a couple of that I thought were actually good for influencer marketing too. But here, let me see the person's name. Oops, sorry. One second, please. So we got Gouda. I'll, I'll say that. I think it's Gouda. He wants to talk about revenue. So we'll take a look at the app as well. But Nadia, you said, hey, this is actually maybe not a good fit for influencer marketing. Can you tell us why? So uh, it's a, sure. just for the listeners out there, it is a free farm bubble shooter. So we've seen these type of apps before. It's a bubble shooter. He's been on the list for a long time, but it is a bubble shooter. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me quickly comment on that. Uh, first of all, when analyzing whether the product is a nice fit for influencer marketing campaign, you have to analyze what platforms the product is available on. Uh, so as I can see, this specific app, this specific game is only available for Android. Am I right? Let's see. It might probably, this is not even good. Yeah, let's assume. Yes. So uh, if the product is only available for uh, one specific platform and is not available for the other, uh, we just lose a lot of traffic because in influencer marketing, you just can't filter out the influencers that have the audience from iOS only or Android only. That's always a mix. Of course, you can um, try to reduce this risk by uh, picking some regions where the majority of the users are iOS users or Android users but that is never uh, very specific and never very accurate. So um, it is always best to wait it out and wait for uh, the iOS, for example, a version to come out to really get the full traffic and the full effect of the influencer marketing campaign. So best case scenario, you want to be available on both platforms, but if you're just available on iOS, is that okay? Uh, I wouldn't say that this is also okay because uh, anyway, you just lose traffic. For mm. uh, the free bubble shooter, for example, it is a bit better because uh, if we're not talking about uh, some countries like, um, I don't know, any country from uh, the English speaking tier one region, if, we're, if you're talking about Latin America, for example, or Brazil, this could be okay because we've run uh, several marketing campaigns, pretty big ones for uh, mobile products that were only available for Android and in Latin America, the results were nice and we didn't lose a lot of traffic. But when we tried switching to uh, English speaking to one countries and European uh, region, then the, the results were much worse simply because um, we just couldn't draw the audience to the product. And the influencers themselves also received a lot of feedback from their audience saying, this is a nice product, but I simply cannot try it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, wanna, I do want to say something to Gouda here. You want to be careful with this free. I think Google is going to ping you now with this changes. You haven't updated since November. So just be careful. looks like 5,000 downloads. So you're just getting started on here as well. And from an ASO standpoint, I can't see the short description, unfortunately, right now because of the my Google Play extensions. But the I think Bubble Shooter is probably the big one, but it is pretty competitive. And so think about that. And I think I noticed a YouTube video here. So 
what we've been doing on YouTube as well, and to what Nadia pointed out with tags, you know, having important tags. So maybe we can talk about this a little bit, Nadia, since you know something about this. But what we've been doing on for Google Play, ASO and organic growth is optimizing the YouTube video and putting tags in there of maybe some of the bigger apps out there, competitors. Because what we've been trying to figure out is how to hack this, because Google, if you're in the similar apps of very popular apps, you do get actually a good amount of downloads coming from that section. And so we've been adding tags in there. What are the best practices for adding tags on YouTube? You said have the competitor's name. Oh, no, uh, it's better not to have the competitor's oh, not to. Okay. Yeah, uh, because uh, YouTube algorithms analyze it always. And if you do that, you might have some problems. Well, you won't have any problems. The influencer will have. So oh, uh, I see. Yeah, uh, the YouTube actually YouTube is pretty strict in terms of uh, its policies uh, for text, especially. So when you want to just make a perfect combination for uh, text on your YouTube video, first of all, make sure to include uh, the name of the product in various languages and in various types of uh, like writing. So. In this case, it will be a bubble shooter as two separate words, bubble shooter as one word, bubble shooter with the most um, uh, like th the most often mistakes, m misspellings. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, of course, the short uh, descriptions of the genre. So this would be the I don't know casual game shooter, bubble shooter, whatever. So you would really need to get at least two or three lines of those tags to uh, get the best result. And so you're saying do not use Bubble Witch Saga. No, use tags. Bubble, but don't use Bubble Witch 3 Saga. Okay, because it's going to hurt your own YouTube. Because this this won't be an influencer. This is just on your YouTube channel, but it's going to end up hurting your YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It might. Got it. Okay. Good to know. All right. Let's take a look at the app, shall we? Let's help them with revenues. Let me open this. Let's see, is, is this loading okay? Come on, Google. All right, let's try it one more time. We got a comment while this loads. Miguel says there are popular YouTube channels that are iOS, Android specific, and you might have some luck there. What do you think about that? Like if we if we're not available on both platforms. Uh, well, you might have some luck there, but uh, don't forget that there is a specific segment of YouTube audience that watches um, the influencers' videos from desktop or from their TV. So you mm -hmm. will lose some audience anyway. Uh, in this case, they will go to organic traffic, but um, you won't be able to track them. Yeah, I feel like so organic traffic. Is try to focus on uh, try to focus on the region. Yeah, I feel like organic traffic is so closely tied to influencer marketing. It's hard to like really differentiate the two in there. Cool. When do most, I have a question while this loads. Sorry, Nadia. But when do most of, when is the, actually, let me frame it this way. When is the, when is it the best time to do influencer marketing? Is it when we're trying to explore new marketing channels and we've exhausted maybe ASO, Apple search ads and Google ads, or is it like, hey, when you're launching, Try influencer marketing. It might work out for you. Uh, I wouldn't say that there is a specific um, time frame wherein you can explore influencer marketing. Of course, you shouldn't just rush into it if you haven't um, built a stable, um, I don't know, Facebook ads campaign yet. And if you don't know how to uh, control those campaigns perfectly. Uh, first of all, you should have some working strategies on other uh, marketing channels before you go into influencer marketing. Because influencer marketing is even more complicated. It includes uh, different risk factors. And uh, you really need to have a lot of nice experience with current trends on other marketing channels before trying to enter influencer marketing. But if we're talking about the apps uh, stages, it actually uh, doesn't matter almost because if we're I'm not sure about the, the, the apps, but for uh, the games specifically for the gaming segment, uh, the campaigns work nicely for the pre-registration phase as well. So this might differ from the product to product, but for, for the app, just 
build the basis and then proceed to influencer marketing. Love it. Okay. I love an honest answer like that because I do think that it is what I've heard other people say. I don't think you guys see this, right? I'm going to, it's kind of slow on my end to get this going, yeah. but the, the app is launching. So there's a bit of a lag that you might see from me playing free farm bubble shooter. So, all right, here's a monetization trick that we've seen work really well. Now you jump in anytime, actually giving bonuses away. So if there's some virtual currency within the app that allows me to unlock certain things, giving bonuses away, let me hit start just to see what happens. So it looks like there's no virtual currency Gouda in your app. I would try to add some bonus currency that I just get to unlock customization. I know one of my past guests who made fun run Aurora, she talked about customization being a huge thing in the gaming space and actually being a good monetization channel. So think about customization in that front and then giving away coins. We've seen this work really well where there's a pop-up on first load and says, Hey, you get 5,000 coins or whatever coins you want to give away claim or double it by watching a video. And that works every single time. And anytime we run this app advice campaign, look at my YouTube channel about this campaign, but anytime we run that campaign, giving away these free coins as the promotion, we've seen a, a huge increase in ad revenues every time we run that campaign. So that's what I would say from a monetization standpoint. All right, let's play one, level one. I still love these games, Nadia, like when it first came out, but now it's like, it's kind of, oh, I don't even, I don't even know how to play this thing. How do you, how do you even shoot? Do I just flip it? But the screen is actually not not showing anything. I so know. Just, I apologize, yeah. stupid Google. But right now I'm on the screen. I don't know how to, oh, the aiming is a little off. I know it's not really loading. Nah. So you just, I'll just commentate on this. But the aiming is really weird when I touch the actual bubble of that per of the app. So here, you guys, look. When I touch this at the very bottom, it's very hard. It's just switches, so I'm I'm okay with it switching, but I have to touch somewhere in the the top of the screen to get my angle going, that little arrow to shoot this. So that is kind of weird mechanic. I think I would try to do the switch out like a a logo as a switch out, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna try to finish the game real quick, and we'll see what happens after I finish the game. Here I'll swap because I want to see if we can help out after we finish what happens after we finish the game and then see if we can help out anything from on station standpoint. So I get a score, blah, blah, blah. things hopping around next level, my high score. So again, here's a great way to monetize after I finish a level, want to double up your coins, all that stuff. There's a video that I have Gouda about video ad monetization optimization. If you just YouTube that on my channel, you'll find it. And I go through fun run, which is a great example of an app doing that really well. So I apologize that this isn't working, but heck, I think I did a pretty good job commenting the whole thing. All right, Nadia. <laughs> so want to take a look at the score? Uh, Let's see yes. one. First Let's do that. Okay. Let's do Keep that. track for me. Okay. So we got right. Joe. Thank you, Joe. We got Andrea says you. So one, one, Adrian, thank you, brother. Two two. Fernando said N. Oh, Ram said N. Three three. All right. Uh oh. Elsmar. Ha. Huh, funny, funny joke. Elsmar said N. Uh -huh. Steve, you need to A B test your jokes. <laughs> there you go, Elsmar. That's funny. Nadia, you round. I told you. I thought you would win the first one, and you ended up winning the first one. The Matthew says, "Hey, I'm trying to sign up for Buzz Guru. Why do I need a corporate email?" I'll answer this, Nadia. Matthew, get a corporate email. A lot of people require it now. A lot of these, like even mobile action, a lot of these companies require because you, they just don't want Hotmail and anybody can sign up for a Hotmail account. If they want to know you're legit. Get a corporate email, man. It's not that hard. So do you want to add on to anything? Or do you want, was that a good enough answer for them? I think that was a perfect answer. Yeah. Okay. Would that you is. like selling our platform? What's that? Yeah, would you like maybe sell our platform? Of course, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm a sales for hire. Questions. Yeah, nice job. All right, Nadia. So before we get to the next app audit, I want to talk about of like, you know, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok. What channel should we put be focusing on? What channel are you like most excited about? You're like, hey, nobody's really paying attention to this. You guys, I think this is a great channel to start really testing on. 
so if we're talking about the, the platforms, uh, honestly, when you pick a perfect platform for uh, you to launch, first of all, you should uh, not let your personal preferences to uh, YouTube channels or YouTube creators uh, meddle with uh, what would be better for the product. This sounds very obvious, but unfortunately, many uh, people who are in, like uh, engaged in influencer marketing in terms of their own company tend to let their personal preferences influence way too much. So uh, first of all, if you're trying to decide on whether you would like to go on YouTube or Instagram and Twitch or TikTok, some platforms are automatically um, eliminated, let's say it that way, uh, when you think about your product. So if we were speaking about a mobile app, then we're not going to do Twitch in any possible way. So this would be obvious, we would skip Twitch. Uh, if uh, we're thinking about TikTok, but we cannot measure organic traffic, then of course we're skip, skipping TikTok. Because TikTok is mainly built on organic traffic. You can really put a link, uh, a tracking link anywhere. So uh, you can put it in the description, you can put it in, in the comments, you can put it, but you basically can click it. So the only option is to uh, buy an ad from a TikTok influencer, but put the just, uh, put the link into the their profile bio. But not many influencers would like to keep it that way, and it is just obvious that you lose some percent of the audience when they have to switch to the profile and then follow a link. So. TikTok is mainly about organic traffic. If you cannot count organic traffic yet, then just skip TikTok, no matter how trendy and fun it is. So for mobile apps, this would uh, mostly leave us with Instagram and YouTube. And actually both of these platforms would just look perfectly. And um, it just depends on the terms of the campaign in the deadlines uh, of the campaign and on the creatives that you're thinking about. Got it. And if you had to pick one between YouTube and Instagram, it looks like those are the top two. Do you have a favorite? Like if I just put this headline out there, Nadia, the Insta the influencer marketing channel for 2022. All right, Nadia, what would that influencer marketing? Oh, channel be? That, that's hard. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let me keep YouTube then. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then the type, the best type of video to create on YouTube. Mm, are we really talking about like the, the sponsor video or just in general? Yeah, I guess both then. How about that? <laughs> I'm selfish. Okay, let's do, okay. Okay. Let's do you're, sponsored you're first really because we're talking about influencer marketing, right? Like it is a sponsored thing. And then I don't know what the general would be. So I'm curious to know what the get the, the answer to the general is. Okay, so if we're talking about the sponsor video, the number one would be the integration. So this would basically be a 60 to 90 seconds description of the product, showcasing the product, just highlighting the, its key features. Uh, I would pick this instead of like a dedicated general video, just because uh, integration is cheaper, it's easier, and it's much easier to find uh, a product that matches the integration format than the dedicated format. Because if you're talking about, I don't know, an, a messenger app, it's almost impossible to uh, create a, a native and organic and actually interesting video for uh, the audience to enjoy if you're, the whole video is just filmed about the messenger app. So what exactly are you going to showcase? If we're talking about a more uh, complicated mechanics uh, product, then of course the dedicated video is also um, worth giving a try. But this will be more pricey and um, this will be um, more difficult to analyze because if the influencer's content is different from the specific dedicated videos that uh, he's done for your product, then this video will get uh, less views and it can be twice less views or five times less views than the average views. And then you will end up just overpaying five times. So this is risky. This is for the risk lovers.
Am I the only one who doesn't hear a thing? Dummy. That's what I. That's what I get for mute okay. myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay, so the integration video would be something like this: how to change your the keyboard on your Android app. And in the middle of this video, you have an ad for whatever sponsor that you have your keyboard app that you. But then the other one would be like, yeah, uh, I don't know, Gboard review, right? Something like this. You're like, that's what you're talking about. Hey, just the dedicated yeah. video about your particular app. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Cool. 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 I love it. I love that you picked YouTube too. Cause we're on YouTube. Guess what? You're we're on YouTube. So YouTube. All right. Giving you some love. So give us some love as well. I apologize for being muted. All right. Nadia, I'm going to try to redeem myself. We got round two. All right. So I'm going to try to try to not be a, not try to lose two zero. You want to start or you want me to start for round two of the dad jokes? Oh, I would prefer to uh, live with my victory and then not try any oh, chance. Oh, I'll dare you. <laughs> <laughs> I got to drop. How dare you? dare you? Nadia. Okay. Well, I got one and then I'm going to try to redeem myself. So oh. let me know what you guys think. Nadia is not going to go into this. Just rank it. All right. Elsmar, I'm going to, I'm not AB testing this. So just rank it. Give me a one to or a five and we do it differently. One is super cool. Five is super lame. Nadia, what do you call a Viking that discovers religion? What do you call a Viking that discovers religion? No idea, suit it. Bjorn again. <laughs> there you go. There. Okay. I did myself. Yeah, see? You're lucky you didn't compete with me on that one. I would have won that one. Easy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go into old Flavia's app. Again, one if you thought that was hilarious. Or five if you thought it was super lame. All right. We got off Lavia wants to take a look at user experience. It's iOS easier for me to show off. What do you think about this app from an influencer marketing perspective? It is, oh, just our, for the listener out there, it is a chat conversation app. So it allows you to have high quality conversations. I think it allows you to sort of have thought provoking questions. So it's all about topics to maybe have at the dinner table. I like to do that with my kids and my wife when we talk about interesting topics or highlights from the day. So this is what this app is all about. All right, sorry, go ahead. Nadia. Okay, so uh, this app is actually better fitting in terms of uh, its core idea for influencer marketing. But once again, I'm not sure uh, it is available uh, for Android. So this might be a problem. Let's assume it is. What what would? No, it's only on iOS. Okay. Yeah. So how would you go about yeah. approaching this? Like, let's say the YouTube. Is it like coming up with some ideas? So we find an influencer on YouTube and say, you know, how to have meaningful conversations with your kids, or like how to get your kids off a screen. You know, like is that yeah, sort actually, of how you might approach this? Just, yeah, yeah. If we just for, forget that um, it is only available on one platform, this app is a pretty good match because it provides us a lot of ways to go creative uh, with the video and the influencers might get like this uh, bright ideas that will motivate their audience to just go download the, the, the app and bring in a lot of traffic. Uh, such apps are actually perfectly fitting for almost any platform. So uh, this app would be perfect for some lifestyle influencers on Instagram, uh, it would be perfect for a uh, lifestyle or even entertainment um, influencers on YouTube. And it would even be a nice way to um, create a fun ad video on TikTok. So mm -hmm. it actually depends on the way uh, your imagination works. So like the, the first thing, the first ideas that will come to mind uh, if we're talking about some YouTube videos, you could hire some entertainment influencers who have a group and they're just uh, filming a vlog or something. And then they just show uh, how they're using this specific uh, app to just strike a conversation. You can get influencers from entertainment that would be able to film a dedicated video with this app, uh, doing like a challenge where uh, they only talk using the, the topics from, from the app for a day, etc. You could also try a story time influencer, like who, usually a female or uh, an LGBTQ um, story time influencer who would be covering their dates or something, and they would be able to integrate the 
the app into the video about the, the date, just promoting it and saying that this app has helped them a lot to just for, for this date specifically to go really well. So the ideas can be numerous. So I'm just like sitting here one, two, three, four, and you can just go, go on with your imagination. And this specific app would be also uh, nice to promote if the developer wasn't sure about uh, what brief and what creative to use because these types of apps uh, help influencers and let influencers come up with their creative ideas, which are always much better than whatever we can think of. Yeah. Here's a date question. What's something ordinary that turns you on? <laughs> Nadia, I was going to play a game. What would, you diff what would you do differently if you knew nobody would judge you? Jesus, this app uh, doesn't work on me. It just uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would answer this question, but I, I, I'm afraid that I would get in trouble for the something ordinary. All right. Let's go, oh, Flavia, before we get in trouble looking at your app, let's take a look at everything. Daily Hellos is the app. Daily Hellos. I like the name. Daily Hellos. So sign up and open more cards i like this make conversations build connections start conversation i like the whole sign up you give me a reason to sign up so yeah. I like that. i'm gonna just start build a deeper connection da, da, da. i'm gonna skip this is interesting okay i don't know what the monetization is going to be but I, I feel like it's going to be packs and stuff all right yeah i think so too i think the user experience is pretty good all right nadia since you and i just met i'm gonna break the ice with you Start conversation. What made you smile this week, Nadia? Um, oh my God, you're gonna make me answer those questions, Jesus! <laughs> I don't know. Like any other interview you've done. Joining, joining the the podcast today. Okay, there you go. I love it. Thank you. It, it was my wife's birthday last uh, on Tuesday, so that's that's something that made me smile. Who do you admire the most? And then if you could be any flavor of ice cream, what flavor would you be and why? Yeah. Bubblegum for me. Pistachio, but that's my favorite one. So I'm going to stick to pistachio. I like that. I like that. I'm going to go with bubblegum because it sucks. It's like you got ice cream and you got gum. You got to come up with, with both. <laughs> and it's fun too. I actually liked it. All right. The, the thing I would say from a monetization's perspective is you got a lot of free stuff, but you also want to promote some of the paid stuff because in the end you're building a business, right? And so you want to play up to some of the paid cards even more. And then maybe because we found that most people buy during this welcome flow of Flavia, I'm just going to call you off, but like you want to show the welcome pack, right? You want to show these packs in here. And I think one of the things that you should be doing, let's see, I'm going to sign up as well for you. Don't spam me. I actually need a new email address. Okay. All right. So one of the things you should be doing here too is let's say the pillow talk. I just randomly selected this guys. Okay. So don't, don't judge me, but if I hit paid, right. If I want to hit paid for this, you should show me a pack where I can buy this pack for just 99 or I can buy all packs for a discounted price. That's a great way to increase your conversions. We did this with Rudy's app and we saw a great conversion rate when we went up there. And I think I would probably just say like, instead of free for you, I would say most popular because you want to play on the FOMO element and with the most popular, have some free packs and then have some paid packs because you want to show in this right here, some of the paid stuff already. You know, make it difficult. And I always point to Calm now. I know they're huge, so they can go around with this. But I do have a paid subscription or a lifetime offer to Calm. But if you look at it, a lot of these stuff in the first page is all paid. So make it a little bit difficult. I know you want to, I think the UI UX looks amazing, but I want to make it a little bit more difficult for people to just always get the free stuff. Make sure that you're promoting some of the paid stuff because this is a business that you're trying to run too. We're all trying to be noble and give away a lot of free stuff, but, you know, we're also trying to be running a business. Nadia, anything else you want to add? Yeah, actually, uh, I would like to uh, dwell on the theory that uh, you have just said, because if you were doing an influencer marketing campaign for this app or for any other app, it is essential to um, include the paid features in uh, what influencers are showing. So they should always show the paid features. They should always show how, how they can um, use the app with the paid features and why it's better to just go and spend uh, some money on this. 
because if you just promote the free features, um, some people really forget about promoting the paid features and just stick to the free ones. And if you don't correct the influencers in that, you're just going to get a lot of installs, but no revenue in the end of the day. Okay, good. Really good questions here. What do you wish people would stop asking you? Nadia would be like, <laughs> all these questions. <laughs> questions, <laughs> yeah. YouTube live stream. <laughs> That's what she would say. <laughs> I love it. All right. I love Lavia. Like, let us know what happens if you do end up making changes. And if you guys have been a part of our app audits, please reach out back to me and let us know if any of our suggestions have played, you know, led to anything. And if it hasn't and it sucked, that's great too. Let me know about that as well. All right. The websites, if you guys want to work on influencer marketing, find the influencer marketing, find the influencers that are going to be the perfect fit for you. We'll go check out Buzz guru buzzguru.com you can find all the analytics figure out who's the right one if you want them to run it they got an agency too so you can go check out the agency side of the platform as well nadia if the audience wants to connect with you personally do you want to send them anywhere else besides buzzguru.com uh yes yeah, sure we can use my uh work email or the linkedin account i've shared the, the link with you before so yeah. linkedin would be perfect if yeah. you would need any consultation or if you would be interested in um, getting a demo of our platform, a showcase of our platforms, or to talk about the agency side, feel free to hit me up. I probably go too fast for some of these, but I wanted to get to read the blog. There's a lot of great stuff and a lot of great brands that they work with as well. So go check it out there. Fernando says, look, another thing to smile about, Nadia. I just signed up for Buzz Guru and I saw that the Coco Million channel is on second place. I have a YouTube channel for kids, but not organic views, not organic views. Any advice for me? So any advice on the YouTube, ch growing your YouTube channel? Is that what he's asking? I don't know. Any advice yeah, for him? That's the question. Okay. Uh, actually, if you would like to get more organic views, our, your job is to really collaborate with the youtube algorithms because uh the algorithms are sometimes a pain and uh you would have to really dwell on the text that you put in the videos and you even though you might not want to but the quickest way would be to use some clickbait and to just show up in in the search results and in the recommendations for other channels but of course the number one goal is to always work on your content and Probably even hope that, I don't know, a TikTok trends, trend finds you because I, I saw the, the TikTok video yesterday when uh, someone found a YouTube channel of uh, an old man who was just uh, uploading his Fortnite videos. He was just playing for hours. He was just trying different stuff and uh, he had zero views on his videos. And like someone, somebody found it, somebody posted it on TikTok and in about like two or three weeks, uh, this man has about 40k subscribers. Oh no, he has 40k average views on his videos on all of them. Wow. He has more than 200k subscribers. Yeah, so that's the part of you can wow. you can pray and hope. Yeah, really. Wow. wow. Okay, you got me excited. That made me smile. That is definitely a great way to end it. What I will also say to you, Fernando, and he did say yes. Like there is this. This is what I personally use and pay for. I'm gonna create a video about this, but. I created a recent video about like this NFT creator app is making blah, 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 blah. And I do these type of videos where I just show off an app that's making a lot of money, talk about what's, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, kind of just show you some app ideas that you guys can create. But NFTs are obviously pretty pre trendy right now. And so that's been one of our most popular videos on our YouTube channel as we speak. And it just hits it home into this. And I, I was like, oh, NFT. And I, I went into vidIQ and I saw, hey, there's actually good monthly searches for that. It's low difficulty. So just all the things from an ASO perspective that makes sense, vidIQ gives you that deal for YouTube as well. So not a sponsor, but this is what I personally use to find keyword or like, yeah, keyword ideas and how to come up with some ideas for YouTube videos. But that's what I would do. It's it's yeah, hard, I'm right? Gonna marketing. Actually, yeah. Uh, back you up on this because uh, sometimes we also use vidIQ. Uh, awesome. It requires you to um, to buy it to a link to a specific YouTube channel, but for our exclusive influencers, for example, sometimes we tend to uh, use it as well. So that that really is a nice tool. Awesome, awesome, and I, I will create a an affiliate 
<laughs> so I'm going to roll that right now. But once again, guys, look with content marketing, it is a long-term game. It takes a while to get going, but once you get that tra traction, it just is like, it's, it's worth it. I mean, this is how I built my entire business. So go do that, Fernando, just start with one, just start creating it. All right. Once again, it is buzzguru.com, buzzguru.com. If you want to connect with Nadia, well, her LinkedIn is in your favorite podcast app or in the description of your YouTube video. Nadia, anything else? Any, any other parting, wise parting words you want to say before we hit the weekend? <laughs> I don't know. I think we're pretty good to go. <laughs> I like it. Nadia's like, somebody yeah, on the spot. Here instead of like doing shots on a Friday night. So <laughs> here's to that. I love it. Well, thank you for joining us so late where you're at. Guys, we're going to be back next week. Let me pull up exactly who's going to be on. Oh, we got an indie developer who's going to all talk about TikTok marketing. He's going to talk about coding, how he's been able to find success. He's, it's a great story. He was a, a college athlete and then he got into a very bad car accident and had some things go wrong. And then he came out of that, built his own app, found success with this app. Is running a lot of marketing campaigns on TikTok. I thought it was an inspirational story, indie developer running TikTok marketing campaigns. And I'm very focused on TikTok. So I want to see how, learn from him, how he's doing it. So join us next week, 9 a.m. Pacific and every Friday. And if you want us to check and look at, take a look at your app, it is once again, appmasters.com slash audit. And we are on the, your favorite podcast apps. Nadia is like, shut up. Let me go home and get me <laughs> off of this. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I will see you next week. Goodbye. Where is Thanks, the stream? It's really fun. <laughs> thanks, Nadia. Yeah, thanks for. Nadia, you're great. Look at this. Thanks. That's why we no, love thank you. you. I was job. really, really nervous, actually. I, yeah, it's okay. You did My great. first time doing something like